Hi, this is Raj from MR Sports Cars. In this video, I'm going to talk about exactly why I think the 911 997 Gen 2 Targa 4Ss are a very, very special model in the 911 range. I haven't had one for quite a while, so I thought I'd actually do this review just simply talking while I'm uh, driving it to go and do the photography. Um, so I'm just leaving the premises now in the car. It's all been nicely cleaned today and hopefully the rain doesn't come. Uh, some of you love the way that my reviews are a uh, sort of real world, sort of not super edited version of, of a um, online car review video. So that's what I, I tend to focus on, which is literally just putting the camera in the car, putting a microphone on so you can actually hear me and um, just driving the cars and talking about how I think they feel, how I think they make, will make you feel um, if you own one of these cars. And talk about some of the foibles, some of the some of the advantages, some of the disadvantages of certain models versus others. In this video, I'm, I'm, all I'm going to talk about is the Targa 4S because it's such a rare car. Uh, I've always struggled to find these cars, and the re there is one very simple reason for that: there weren't very many made, so there weren't very many ordered for the UK. Going back to when these first came out, which was well, they were announced in late 2008, um, early 2009, so the order books opened around then. That was coming out of the credit crisis, so there wasn't a huge amount of money for these cars and people willing to, to pay the high price that there was for this car. I mean, these cars were a significant increase over a coupe or a convertible, and from memory they were actually very similar to 911 turbo money. So. Those that wanted the, the flagship 911 tended to go for the turbo. So this car, although is very special, it was only really the connoisseurs ordering the new cars that knew that these were very special and also that they're possibly serial Porsche owners from new and they wanted the glass roof, which I've deliberately set the camera so it's slightly higher up so you can actually see that roof and I will actually open that now. So all the controls are just down here. Actually, before I open it, I'll just show you that it does have a sun blind as well. So you can, I mean, it's not really needed in the UK. It's just a nice feature really to uh, just block out if, the, if it is particularly particularly hot and really, really sunny on a, on a day. I guess it, it's helpful to have that closed when you're uh, parking the car up in the heat of the day um, it just keeps it a bit cooler in the cabin by not having basically a glass house. Uh, but I'll open that now. And, and obviously as, you, as I'm driving along you can see a, a glimpse of what I can see which is basically the whole of the sky and the trees as they rush by. And it really does, even though this is uh, a triple black car, so it's basalt black, um, black extended leather, so leather everywhere, dashboard, doors, seats obviously, centre console, it's, it's as standard these cars came very highly spec with, with leather everywhere. It also has black Alcantara and black plastics around the roof so that's why it's called triple black uh, because those three things were optioned in black. The roof really does lighten up the interior, um, letting up in so much more light and Actually, if you get a good one like this one is, and this is one I've sold in the past, and I've just taken it back because the owner is um, going to work abroad indefinitely, and um, he didn't just want it sitting in the garage at home. He's not selling his home or anything. Um, his family's still gonna be at home, but he didn't want it just sitting at home, not being used, and potentially being a headache for his family to sort of keep on top of, run it every month or so. Um, so he just said, well, I can just buy a car when I know I am coming back to the UK. Um, another Porsche so um, I bought this back off of him and yeah it's I'm always thrilled to buy cars back I'm sure you've heard me say it before in other videos in my diary of a Porsche specialist series um, because I know the cars for several years then I, I've checked them out this one I checked out two years ago bought it from a private owner then um, who offered it to me a Porsche club member and I decided to um, obviously do all the prep on it present it, sell it. I probably could have sold it to 10 people 
um, when I when I actually listed it. And this car, actually, even subsequently it being sold over the years, I've had emails, sort of probably about one a month, saying if you get another one like that with some of the options that this one has, I would love to buy it. And in fact, I just put one picture on Instagram, and potentially it's already sold to someone who's who's already bought a 911 off me. It was their dream to always have a Targa. I haven't had a Targa for so long. It's very rare that they come up. And as soon as he saw it, he said, look, I need to I need to come and see it. So I've d had all the mechanical prep done. It's just been serviced uh, by the previous owner, but I've also had some additionals which were missed off by the, the Porsche pressures you got to do it. Um, it was it was kind of due, it's, it was five years into needing its uh, auxiliary drive belt. So we've done that. Uh, we've done the brake fluid change as well. Some specialists don't do the brake fluid change. As a matter of course, every two years they just test for moisture content. Um, but I, I just thought, well, let's get it done so it has that stamp, so it's fully, fully stamped and up to date. So all of that's been done. It's just been MOT'd as well, and the chap is hopefully coming this afternoon. But I thought it's a great opportunity while I'm driving this car around to do a quick review of exactly how, how it feels behind the wheel because they are they are absolutely sensational. So let me open the roof now. Sorry, I'm just going over a, a road in, in Nebworth, which has a, a few speed bumps. But there it is. I mean, they, they should glide open like this one does, the roofs. And I'll do a separate video about how to care for that roof, how to maintain it, keep, keep it in tip-top condition. Now, a lot of people ask me, do the roofs rattle? And in all honesty, some of them do. Some of them don't. This one doesn't rattle particularly badly at any kind of speed. It doesn't have a sort of a, a specific resonance that causes it to sort of squeak at a certain speed. Um, some do. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do. But in that video, I will talk about some of the, the small things you can do to potentially stop it making a noise. It is one of the things you have to kind of live with. It's never going to be as solid and rigid as a coupe. And likewise, it's never going to be as as um, roof open, top down experience as a convertible. It, it is very much half a halfway house, but it is extremely collectible because there's so many, there's low numbers. It has its own unique look with it having a, has this gorgeous like chrome, chrome trim down the sides or over the, over the, the side windows. And it has that rear hatch the rear section can be open, the rear window can be open, so you can actually use that rear section behind the seats um, to put luggage in if you want to. All of that sort of make it a very special model, and it has been a special model throughout the, the era, the, throughout the ages. Uh, introduced with the 993 series air-cooled, it was also carried forward on the 996, then the 997s as well, and then in the 991s they completely redesigned it and actually made it more much look much more like um, the classic uh, Targas which actually had a removable panel. The 993s, 996s, 997s have this sliding basically panoramic roof with a, a roof mechanism um, with, metal, with a metal frame which is actually I believe based on the, com the convertible body shell. So this car isn't going to be the best car around the track but you know what a lot of these cars now aren't really sort of taken on the track. They're not really used in anger. They're a weekend car to enjoy with your family, to take out on a nice drive, to go and meet other owners of Porsches or other um, sports cars. It is a collectible classic now. And that's the kind of people that are really looking at these cars to buy, hold on to and enjoy. And they're really not seeing any form of uh, depreciation with them now. They are especially if they look really well looked after like this one is they drive phenomenally this one's got the pdk box with it being a 4s it's got the 3.8 liter flat six so it's got 385 horsepower it will do 60 in comfortably under four and a half seconds if you want it to and the seven speed auto is just the perfect match for how the characteristics of this car as being a relaxed sort of long distance cruiser as well as a nice weekend car to go out in the summer with the roof open. I mean, hopefully you can hear there's absolutely zero wind noise with that roof open. The way that they've designed it, the engineers and the aerodynamicists in 
uh, in Germany at Porsche have done a fantastic job of making it completely usable with the roof open. And you can put open and close the roof at will, um, at speed. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to open it at station or anything like that. The one thing I would say though is that with these cars, it's the motors actually need quite a lot of power to drive them. So the best thing to do is actually you can open it with just all the ignition lights on without the car running but it's it's probably best to have the car started have the alternator running and sort of providing positive charge into the battery to run the roof as well um, so basically only use I would say only use the roof when the car's actually running and then you'll have no issues at all um, they shouldn't leak either and this car obviously doesn't leak um, but I just I love if you have an occasional 911 um, this this is sort of perfection I think it is that good at sort of making you feel like you're driving a, a special car and I'm not even driving that fast I'm not even going on like a spirited drive I'm just literally driving from A to B and you feel like you're driving a very very special car it's a bit narrow through here coming up to Aston so I'm in Hertfordshire as a lot of you will know and the roads are, can be a bit tricky because they are narrow um, in East Hearts, where I am in, in the countryside here. Sometimes the, the roads are only like a car and a half width, but they are two-way roads, they're not one way. So it can be a bit of a challenge in a car like this. But actually, even though this is the 4S and it is the wide body, which is 4.4 centimeters wider than a non-four-wheel drive 911 of this era, it doesn't actually feel intimidating because cars have actually increased in size so significantly that this is actually quite a narrow car even though it's the wide body of this era it does feel like you can sort of maneuver through tight spaces maneuver through like park cars with cars coming towards you without feeling like someone's gonna hit your wing or hit a wing mirror um, obviously you still have to take care but it is a brilliant car for our UK narrowish country roads. Sun's starting to come out now, so you can see the, uh, the cabin light up. So I'll have another look at how many left, but as far as I, as far as I know, there were just over 200 made throughout the build era of the 997 Gen 2 and you can check for yourself on how many left.co.uk if you put in 911 Targa 4S um, it will allow you to search because handily Porsche in the UK on the V5s they registered Targa 4S's as a specific model not just 911's and they also even split out Targa 4, Targa 4S, Targa 4S semi-automatic which is one of these a PDK and the manuals just don't have the semi-automatic or the S-8 at the end. So you can you can determine quite accurately how many of these were made. And I, I believe there was over just over 200 ordered between 2009 and 2012, which is a very low number. There were some manuals as well around 30, mid-30s, I think. So 35, 36 from memory. I did have one and that was a very popular car as well. Again, because it's the rarest iteration of it. Uh, with the biggest engine. It was in a striking uh, white Carrera white. Um, and then I've had, I think about five or six of these now. Um, one in Carrara white with red leather, which was a PDK. And then the rest were all basalt black with black leather and loved absolutely every one of them. This is, this is sensational itself. It's uh, been looked after the whole time since I've, I sold it and the chap I bought it from the first time, bought it from Porsche Hatfield, and um, it was an approved used car with two years warranty. Then he sold it to me as the warranty was coming to an end, and he bought a, a 991 to replace it with, which then actually, sadly, he sold quite soon after because it didn't give him the same feeling as this 997. 997 Gen 2s have their own unique feel, even though the engines, are essentially the same, just with a little bit more horsepower than the 991. 
the gearboxes are updated but they're, they're still seven speed semi-automatics if you get the the pdk they are a big step up in size also performance responsiveness the the cabin design is completely redesigned um, even the sat nav is all updated so it is a different experience and prices are actually very similar for the two and i think there's basically two camps of people um, who are going down a different path so there's the ones who want the car that looks historically historically relevant similar to a 993 which is those that want a 997 gen 2 like this and then there's those that want the sort of the latest and greatest but they still want the non-turbocharged engine so not a three litre twin turbo like the 991 gen 2 and the 992s they don't want a three litre they want the 3.8 or the 3.6 or the 3.4 uh, flat six with no turbos because they have the true character and sound that Carreras of, of old um, have and they really are so those two models and they're the two models I focus on predominantly because they are a good representation of basically the broad market of people who want to buy these cars hold on to them collect them and you're seeing that in values values are going up for both side by side so these cars have been appreciating 991 gen ones have been appreciating in my opinion especially for the best cars i've experienced that and i've seen the demand for the two still be very high you haven't yes they haven't got the appeal of someone who wants a brand new porsche 911 but they've definitely got a following both of them for people who are looking long term at the fact that they are going to be collectible and they already are collectible and if you can find a nice one in the colors the with the options that you that you personally want then i i would advise you to buy one because yeah other people are as well they are uh, great cars to hold on to obviously you have to invest in servicing them and yeah just recommissioning bits here and there but they are incredibly reliable cars and extremely rewarding behind the wheel no matter what what gear stick you have if you have the semi-automatic pdk or the full manual they are absolutely cracking cars and that's where i'm going to leave it actually um, if you've got any questions specifically about targas or 911 models in in general please don't hesitate to um, write a comment below please do subscribe to my channel as well um, I'm so passionate about these Porsches particularly of this era 2009 to 2015 and um, I'm producing a lot of content on 911s Caymans Boxsters how-to guides driving reviews as well as the stock that I actually sell in those era in that era of those models um, thank you for watching